stuff. It that. took him four years, and he completely, he just completely ripped everything out of the lifestyle to the bare walls. And what he found was quite significant. He found Russian graffiti that the Russian soldiers had left on the walls of the Reichstag. Yeah, like, you know, Ivan was here, and you know, Hitler is dead, and all this sort of stuff. And he thought that was so historically important. He said, we've got to leave it there. So if you go into the Reichstag, you'll actually see this Russian graffiti. It's quite interesting. And it's the only part of the building in the world which has got graffiti from a foreign country in it. Uh, he also replaced the glass dome that you can see there. They can also actually go up there. It's free to get in, by the way. Yeah. The German the Houses of Parliament. So the building next to the uh, Reichstag is a very big sort of glass building in front of us. So there is the Paul Luber House. This is where all the different fractions of the German Parliament have their offices. Uh, the German Parliament has uh, yeah, is, is, is beaten all its records. We had elections last year, and now the Parliament is larger than it's ever, ever been before. But it uh, doesn't really matter. I mean, they, they, they obviously knew that was going to happen because there are 1,600 offices in that building. The Chancery is the big building here. Straight ahead on the right, that's where the Chancellor of Germany works. Olaf Scholz. The Berliners called it the elephant washing machine. That's their <laughs> take on it. And the building you see there behind the trees on the right is the Swiss Embassy. Uh, that actually survived the war, the Swiss Embassy. Uh, well, that's not surprising. The Swiss were neutral during the war, weren't they? But that's not the reason, which is a pure fluke. And the, the Berliners uh, call it the first aid box. If you look to your right, you'll see a bell tower. Uh, this is not just any old bell tower, actually. In this tower are 68 bells. Each one of the bells is from a church that was destroyed in Berlin during the war. Mercedes-Benz, they collected these bells and then gave them to Berlin for a present. Uh, for a big party, which I've mentioned a couple of times already, the 750th anniversary of Berlin in 1987. So that's why the Berliners call it Big Benz. Yeah, or Notre Dame now. And uh, it's not just a bell tower, it's actually an <laughs> instrument. It's known as a carillion. If you don't know what a carillion is, it uh, looks a bit like an organ. You don't play it with your fingers, you play it with your fists and your, and your feet, because otherwise you couldn't move the bells. All right? And uh, they chime, actually, at midday, and then they chime again at six in the evening. And during the summer months, on a Sunday afternoon from three till four, a guy actually comes down here and plays a concert for an hour, okay? Uh, whatever, you know, whatever he feels like playing. I've heard um, Elvis Presley being played on these bills, or Frank Sinatra, what do you want? Right, like I said, uh, these uh, chime at uh, midday, midday, and at 6 p.m. Ding dong, ding dong, ram a -lama ding dong. <laughs> uh, the tent you can see over there is a permanent tent we have in the, in the tear garden. It's for concerts, known as the tippy tent. We have that.